Hi all, today I'm going to be talking about the ship's plans. So the different kind of plans that are available on the ship and what are the uses of each of these plans. So in specifically, I'll be talking about the general arrangement plan, the midship section plan, the scantling plan, uh, the shell expansion plan, and some other kind of plans such as the double bottom plan, dex plan, construction plans, or safety plans, docking plans, capacity plans, and uh, plans for navigation light arrangement. Now I found uh, some drawings uh, and some examples of plans to show you so that you get an idea of the, what the plans look like. But uh, in all honesty, there were some plans that I just couldn't get an example of. I didn't have them in my stock or reservoir, so I cannot show you what those plans look like. So my apologies in advance. Also, I want to make sure I'll tell you about the importance of each of these plans because in my previous video, I talked about the lines plan. And I think I kind of overlooked uh, and I did not tell you really about the importance of the lines plan. So the I'll just quickly tell you that here that the lines plan, the importance of it is mainly in the dry dock. Uh, something that I mentioned at the end of my previous video that the dry dock people, they benefit a lot from the lines plan because they get an idea of the profile of the seabed and they can plan the blocks. Uh, this goes together with the docking plan. Also, the lines plan is very useful for any kind of repairs works uh, that is carried out because it gives them an idea. The lines plan gives you an idea for what the plating arrangements, the ordinates and the vertical arrangements, how the ship design and the ship is constructed so that is also an uh, advantage of the lines plan so I just quickly addressed it here but today's uh, video uh, let me get into it and I'll talk about the different kind of plans uh, that are available on the ship and what is the importance of each because to build a ship uh, you need hundreds of plans and hundreds of drawings are needed so a selected number of these plans or drawings uh, are to be submitted for approval to the flag state and the relevant classification society so of course I will start with the genuine arrangement plan but before I do that, I want to give you the importance of these plans. So you can get a you can get the uh, stamp of authority from a classification society. So once you build a ship, you need to register it under a classification society, right? So to get that registry, you have to, of course, you start working initially from the classification society, right? From the time that you uh, a ship owner orders a ship to be built, uh, a representative of the classification society is associated with the shipbuilding process, but the plans kind of uh, form part of the documentation to show that the ship has been built in accordance with the requirements of the classification society. And that is where the classification society gives their stamp of approval. They register the ship under their society uh, because it is important from an insurance point of view. So the, it tells the insurers that the ship has been built and constructed. It is seaworthy. It complies with the firefighting, the life-saving arrangements, the safety arrangements, and only then the ship can go out to sea and uh, be involved in any kind of commercial property. So that is the importance of all these plans. Uh, of course, there are a number of plans uh, like we'll see today. So the, all these plans and the drawings, they have to be approved by the classification society and the drawings concerning safety in general have to be approved by the flag state of the ship. So which drawings have to be submitted is depending on the type of ship. So drawings have to be submitted to classification societies as well as flag state. I can give you some examples here. So the classification society requirements could be the general arrangement plan that you see on your screen, the lines plan that we discussed previously, the construction plan, transfer sections, midship section plan, something we'll be talking about today, the double bottom plan, fore and aft ship, rudder, stern frames, engine foundations, crane foundations, deck house capacity plan, pumping and piping plan, shafting, loading plan or loading manual for longitudinal strength, and the flag state will require the general arrangement plan, the capacity plan, the safety equipment plan, the stability calculations, and all class approved plans and drawings. So of course, uh, this also depends on the flag state. Uh, flag states may have different requirements from one another, but I'm trying to just classify it here. So let me start with the general arrangement plan. You can see part of it here. And the other part you can see here, I'll show you some more uh, parts of the general arrangement plan. So the general arrangement plan roughly shows the division and the arrangement of the ship. So you can see a side view of the ship and the plan views of the most important decks and sometimes even the cross sections or a front and back view are also included. And the views and cross sections mentioned 
display among other things the division into the different compartments for example tanks engine rooms holds they are all shown separately then they show you the location of the bulkheads the location and arrangements of the superstructure the major equipment such as the mooring winches the loading gear the crane uh, any bow thrusters lifeboats etc uh, in addition the general arrangement plan uh, also shows some basic data uh, and uh, includes the principal dimensions of the ship such as the length overall the length between perpendiculars the molded breadth the molded draft the molded depth so on and so forth then the volume of the holds the tonnage of the ship the dead weight of the ship the engine power the speed of the ship when we talk about the speed it shows the service speed at different uh, speeds so dead slow ahead slow ahead half ahead full ahead and similarly for the stern speeds then it also shows the details of the classification society so you can see here uh, towards the uh, bottom right hand corner of the general arrangement plan and this general arrangement plan that i showed you was for a multi purpose vessel that carries mostly paper timber products and containers but here you can see towards the bottom right hand corner of the plan you can see the ship's dimensions are mentioned right starting from length overall the length between perpendicular the molded breadth depth draft the dead weight the tonnage and the capacities of the hold the ballast water tanks the portable water tanks the diesel oil tanks so and then the classification society and the details of the classification society is also mentioned uh, the number of the plan is mentioned the scale of the plan and the date at which it was uh, del delivered the yard number in which the ship was uh, constructed or rather built the drawing number of course goes by the they have a serial numbers for all these drawings so and who it is drawn by so all these details and you can see are provided in the, on the plan as well so if you go into the plan and these plans are uh, located and displayed very conspicuous positions on the ship sometimes there could be more than two or three general arrangement plans displayed in the alleyways it could be displayed uh, uh, maybe sometimes in the engine room and the bridge as well but mostly in the alleyways and the ship's office uh, these plans are displayed and you can you must be passing them almost every day so sometimes have a look at these plans these plans are very useful to get the stamp of approval from the classification society also remember all these plans whatever plans we talk about they come in very handy during the dry dock time as well because in dry dock if you have any kind of major or minor structural changes or any modifications to the ship structure or the ship's plans then these plans come in handy to make sure that the plans are still relevant the ship is still relevant if any major changes have been made which do not comply with the details that are given in the plan then of course you have to update the plan you have to contact the classification society again once the approvals are made then you have to get it all the plans have to be reviewed by the classification society if there are any major structural changes and only then the classification society will renew their approval for your vessel again all right so if there are minor changes that do not affect their general arrangement plan or these plans then of course the classification society will be happy to keep their stamp of approval associated with it, associated with the vessel the next plan i'm going to be talking about is the midship section plan this is a plan uh, that uh, is kind of a cross sectional plan so this cross sectional plan it shows one or more transfer sections of the vessel so in case if it is a freighter uh, then it is always a cross section of the hold near to the midship of the vessel uh, this plan also you will see shows the principal dimensions of the vessel uh, as you can see here on the screen itself you can see the length overall the length between perpendiculars the molded breadth the molded depth um, design drafts scanning drafts engine outputs maximum displacement uh, uh, service speeds uh, propeller details all that is provided here uh, then it also provides you with the thickness quality and the thickness of the shell platings the deck platings um, all longitudinal stiffenings the transverse frames and web frames and if applicable and uh, it's important then the data of the equipment associated with this vessel for example the engine power and the speed uh the the date on classification equipment numbers such as anchors uh, how many anchors the ship is carrying what is the length of the chain cables what is the maximum longitudinal bending moment uh, so all these details are provided so you can see on your screens itself towards the bottom you can see the arrangement of the tank tops uh, the open floors all that is shown in the midship section this focuses on the midship length of the vessel again this is very important uh, from a stress calculation point of view gives the idea to a classification society surveyor when the ship is built 
when the ship is built at the dry dock and before it is put out to service this gives a good idea to the classification society surveyor about the stresses and the strains that the ship will be facing especially in the midship section and how the construction of the ship compensates uh, for these stresses and strains that may be experienced by the vessel during its course of the voyage and the next one i go on to is a scantling plan or it's also called sometimes a construction plan depends on uh, what is called on your vessels so the uh, the scantling plan it actually shows the longitudinal center line section uh, and the plan views of the most important decks so the drawings also includes the watertight and the other important bulkheads uh, it indicates the locations of the bulkheads the dimensions of the structural members including the quality and the plate thickness so especially from the longitudinal center line section now sometimes in these plans the bulkheads are also shown on the midship section drawing so you can see here the details again are shown and again these plans are very important uh, especially from uh, the strengthening point of view what kind of strengthening has been done for the vessel especially in the longitudinal section so we talked about the transverse section in the previous plan this is more from a longitudinal section very helpful also during the dry docks or if any major structural changes have to be made or if the ship has kind of buckled under stress and strain or loading or sea conditions and any modifications have to be required or additional strengthening members have to be required and then these plans come in very handy during the dry dock so if any again major changes take place then again these plans have to be updated and again approval has to be sought from the classification society uh, before the ship can be considered seaworthy for it to be able to load cargo or go out into the sea and used for commercial purposes the next plan is the shell expansion plan now in order to have information about the distribution of the different plates of the shell and other details for example hull openings over the complete hull a shell expansion plan is drawn so that is the purpose of it to show the distribution of the different shell platings and or if there are any hull openings so at each frame number and at each level uh, you can see what quality and the thickness of shell plate is fitted this is very important in case any kind of major or minor repairs have to be carried out especially in the dry dock because that is where you can carry out any kind of repairs that involve the shell plating now normally at sea the repairs done by the seafarers are minor repairs they are uh, you know just a quick repair or a temporary job many major repairs that involve the platings and strengthening of platings or changing of platings are carried out in the dry dock now this drawing or this plan is usually made with the center line of the bottom shell at its actual length and it is the basis for the drawing all right so the basis of the drawing is the center line of the bottom shell each frame is drawn as a line rectangular to this baseline the frame spacing is at scale apart with a length of the total developed length from keel to rail as if a rope has been drawn along the per particular frame so the seams and landings of the shell placing are drawn the shell openings like the sea chest longitudinal internals are drawn as dotted lines tanks borders decks etc they are all shown in this shell expansion plan and the details of the platings the thickness the quality of these platings each are shown with reference to a frame and of course with a reference to the bottom shell plating then the other type of plans for which i could not find an example uh, again and i'm sorry for that is the double bottom plan so the height and the length of the double bottom tanks can be found uh, in the construction plan as well as in the midship section plan but uh, it's also found in the double bottom plan so where the tank top meets the shell can be seen on the shell expansion plan the forward part which is vulnerable to the impact forces due to the increased movement of the ship and has increased kind of scantling arrangements are also shown in the double bottom plan so of course i am not saying the double bottom plan uh, the the details provided in the double bottom plan are not provided in the other plans you will have details of the double bottom plans in the other plans as well such as construction and plan, plan and midship section but the double bottom plan focuses only on the double bottoms so you will have the details of the double bottoms uh, regarding the plating the scantling arrangement and everything in detail it focuses only on the double bottom is the double bottom plan then you have some of the deck plans the decks are important for the class as far as they are part of the longitudinal strength calculation so the midship section gives most of the information and also does the construction plan 
but decks are in way of the neutral plane and they are much less important but the deck plan still provides you with all the information about the decks uh, and of course the classification society like i said they are more interested in decks that contribute to the strengthening but the deck plan here will include all the decks even the ones which may not be contributing significantly to the strengthening of the ship but it does then we have the engine room and foundation plan and this is important because it includes the foundations of the various machinery in connection with the propulsion forces and vibration special drawings uh, with the web frames and vertical structures are made part of this drawing and uh, they are sometimes also called construction of plans depends on the ship i have seen it both so that's why i mentioned both the names here then we have the safety plan which is like a general arrangement plan on which all the safety devices such as live boats live rafts live boys hydrants fire hose boxes escape routes emergency escapes fire extinguishers they are all shown and again this safety plan is very important even when you are having a safety equipment survey the safety equipment uh, surveyor might actually come and ask you for a copy of this plan and they might go and make sure that the location of the safety and the firefighting equipment is as per this plan so make sure if you are preparing for a safety equipment survey uh, you make sure that sometimes every now and then you go around the ship and ensure that the location of the firefighting and the safety equipment is as per the safety plan then we have the docking plan i have talked about the docking plan in my previous video as well the docking plan is actually a mixed version of the general arrangement plan and the capacity plan uh, it it has to show where the ship should be supported by the dock blocks when it, the vessel has to go in a dry dock so the important thing is the location of the longitudinal and the transverse bulkheads the rise of floor and the shell openings that also includes the drain plugs the echo sounder logs um, the doppler logs Uh, other associated equipment then we have the capacity plan now remember with the docking plan uh, the lines plan and docking plan together they are very useful for the dry dock people to understand the profile of the seabed a profile of the ship's bottom so that they can plan the arrangement of the dock blocks uh, where the vessel sits on during the repairs then you have the capacity plan which is a simplified version of the general arrangement plan so all tanks and holds are indicated with their volumes and the corresponding center of gravity in this plan so together with the stability and the light ship weight particulars this forms the basis on which the stability calculations are performed now normally this plan goes together with the dead weight scale uh, which shows the relation between the draft freeboard displacement uh, tpc and dead weight in fresh and salt water so make sure that if you have the capacity plan you have also have access to a dead weight scale of the ship so that dead weight scale will be particular to that ship and it will show you the relation between the drafts and the free boards the vessel's displacement tpc and dead weight both in fresh and salt water finally we have the navigation light arrangement plan and this have the navigation lights as you know they have to be installed in accordance with the collision regulations the international regulations for prevention of collisions at sea now which describe the position and the visibility range of the various lights now this arrangement also has to be approved by the flag state and that is why they issue you with the navigation light because that forms part of the documentation to show that your vessel's navigation lights have been arranged or constructed or rather installed in requirements with the collision regulation so that it is safe for the vessel to proceed at sea the other vessels will be able to see the lights they will be able to recognize the lights the lights will be very clear and there will be no confusion regarding the lights at sea Finally before I end the video I also wanted to show you the last plan that is the bulkhead plan now every ship has to be provided with some kind of watertight or weather tight bulkheads or both rather and minimum requirement for every vessel is at least the four peak bulkhead which is also called the collision bulkhead it is the first bulkhead right after the forecastle deck it is the strongest bulkhead because it kind of bears the load of any kind of impact or pounding and pitching of the vessel and then uh, you also have the aft peak bulkhead which is the strongest bulkhead in the aft direction from the aft and then you have the engine room bulkheads and those bulkheads are also very strong because these engine room bulkheads kind of sustain the pressure if there is any kind of flooding they allow that they, they kind of absorb that pressure so that uh, the engine engine room doesn't get flooded so whenever there is flooding the engine room is protected by these engine room bulkheads it prevents the flooding of the engine room so the bulkhead doesn't break or it doesn't fall uh, or it doesn't crumble under pressure and the water should not ingress into the engine room because as long as the engine room is operational the machinery is operational the ship can be moving the generators are operating and the the waters uh, during the flooding in from different compartments can be pumped out so that is the reason that the engine room is protected 
uh, and similarly the aft part and the forward part of the vessel is protected for the same reason so collision bulkhead absorbs most of the pressure it takes the pressure so that the other compartments do not get flooded or the other compartments do not sustain any damage now the required number of bulkheads on a ship is uh, given in the table and you can see here i put the example of a table here and this is as per the rules of the classification societies of course different classification societies have different requirements i'm just giving an example here so alternative arrangements can be considered depending on the operational restrictions and adequate construction compensation so for example if you are sailing on container ships as compared to icebreakers you may have different requirements similarly for bulk carriers or depending on the length of the vessel sometimes vessels are longer and there could be more longitudinal stresses or uh, shearing forces and bending moments could be more the arrangements could be more or the requirements could be more i've just given an example of how it shows how the classification society provides an example of course depending on the nature of the trade the length of the vessel the strengthening arrangements the purpose for which the vessel was built these arrangements could differ or the requirements for the bulkheads could differ based on the classification society and this is an example the one that you see on your screen is like an example of a feeder ship which is about 134 meters long with three watertight bulkheads in the holes and three container guide bulkheads all right so i think i leave the video now it's uh, getting too long let me know how this video was i always appreciate your constructive feedback like i got one for my last video so i hope this time i explained to you about the importance of each of these plans uh, what most of them look like or some of them look like i could not find the examples for all and uh, why you should be learning about these plans hopefully this will be helpful for you for your examination purposes or your knowledge purposes thanks guys and bye for now